2023 continues to be a year where we get a steady stream of, of decent, good games that are coming out on a regular frequency. Lords of the Fallen, the new reboot, that looks to be the latest in this long line of games. That to me probably started all the way back with Baldur's Gate 3. You could go back even further with something like Hogwarts Legacy, but it's been a pretty decent year for games. And I say that as someone who's been frustrated over the years with live service, microtransaction driven titles. Even I can't complain at the moment. It's looking pretty good. But we only had Cyberpunk Phantom Liberty a couple of weeks ago. We're now gonna be getting this Lords of the Fallen, which I will say, it looks fantastic. I would say if I'm comparing Souls likes, and even if we just look at From Software's library of games, that Lords of the Fallen may have the best art direction since Bloodborne. It is really good. I think it looks better than Elden Ring. Even if we just talk about style, I think it looks better than Dark Souls 3. Bloodborne, I really love the aesthetic of that game. And, and I think Lords of the Fallen comes close in its own way. It, it just looks that good. Now, there's obviously been a lot of videos going around showcasing the game and Feedback looks to be pretty positive. There's nothing I've seen that tells me that I shouldn't buy it early on and, and support a title like this. One thing I will say is it's always been a bit of a, a puzzling game in its development for me because I played the original Lords of the Fallen back in 2014, 2015, I think it was. And what I can say is, is I thought it was pretty shit. I didn't think it was a very good game at all. It was obviously a bit of a Dark Soulsy ripoff, but it was several tiers below. It was much worse than something like Dark Souls 2, which people criticize. It's nowhere near that good. It's short, there's not many areas to explore. The combat was pretty average. The art direction in that game felt a little bit cartoonish. It, it didn't feel very real. The bosses, pretty forgettable. Again, it's been nearly 10 years since I've played it, so it's more of a vibe thing. It's hard to talk about specifics, but I don't have super fond memories. I would never go back and revisit it. So it did seem a little bit odd to me that they were dusting out, dusting off this IP and bringing it back in some shape or form. You'd normally do that. We see it with movies and things where they bring back old beloved IPs and remake them. To do it to Lords of the Fallen feels like bringing back an old B-movie or something and remaking it for whatever reason. I suppose in their defense, they think that because Lords of the Fallen is associated with the Dark Souls-like, that's a good reason to bring the name back. Maybe people who don't follow news coverage, look up videos on games, they're going to just say, all right, it's that Souls-like again, let's buy it. However, because word of mouth back then wasn't very strong, I, I struggle to see how that will correlate in sales. I think the game's got to be good. It's got to get strong word of mouth this time around with this specific game for people to actually go out and buy it. So we'll see what happens. But again, they're delivering so far, I think. The YouTubers, streamers out there who have actually played it, they all seem to be saying good things about it. And I think it's going to do reasonably well. I would expect it to release on Steam it to have very positive, mostly positive reviews. I guess the, the main concern people might have is a little bit of jank. This isn't a AAA game. It's probably not gonna be super polished. If you look at it visually, people have said that as it's an Unreal 5 game, I don't have a lot of knowledge of these engines, but from what I see, it's quite easy to make it look polished in the visual department. But how it actually plays could be a little bit different. In some of the videos I've seen, it doesn't look maybe quite as smooth as a Dark Souls, at least the later Dark Souls. Maybe it's a bit more like Dark Souls 1, which is a, a little bit, I suppose, slower, maybe a little bit clunkier. As much as I love it, I think it's the best Dark Souls game. Lords of the Fallen, it may be a bit similar, but it's just that, I suppose, name tag of, of jank and something not being super smooth. It, it can affect a game's reputation. We've seen it with Starfield. We saw it, I bring up Cyberpunk again because the expansion reminded me, the original release where everyone was shitting on it and looking for glitches and different things. I understand that we want a super smooth game, but it's going to be very hard for these, if we want to call them double A devs, the ones where there's maybe 100 plus employees, 150 employees, but they aren't big enough to be a AAA studio, and they may not have the resources or the budget to really, really polish something. 
there's something to be said there. Maybe you could reduce the scope and you have a smaller game and you polish it, but I don't think it's ever going to be realistic. I try and see the mountains for the trees. Is that an expression? I I've pulled that out. I don't even know. But I try and look at the content for what it is. I don't judge every little glitch and, and call the game shit. It's unplayable because I encountered something that wasn't meant to be there. I try and appreciate what is in the game. And I wouldn't consider myself super optimistic when it comes to games. I just went on a tirade earlier about microtransaction driven titles. I'm one to criticize games when they should be criticized. But I do think that sometimes people get in their own heads about a game having jank, that means it sucks, that means we can't enjoy it. Even if the content is really good, it's really rich, it just so happens they haven't had that time to, to really hone in and make it a super smooth experience than something like a Sony first party game. I'll say this, I would prefer to play something like Lords of the Fallen from what I've seen than a Horizon Forbidden West, which I know is going to be a super safe experience. It's going to be fairly bland, it'll do things in that open world space, I imagine quite well, but, but I'm sick of that. There's a million of those games. There's not many Lords of the Fallens in 2023. So I'm gonna enjoy it for what it is. I just hope that if it really is good, people consider buying it. The concern too is all the talk about, it'll release now and then the devs will fix it as time goes on. It feels a bit like it punishes people who support the game because if they release it and I buy it and I play it through, I'm probably not going to rush back to it and, and replay it again when it gets fixed. I felt a little bit like this with Cyberpunk. I bought it on PC when it came out. You can call me an idiot. There was a lot of word of mouth pretty quickly saying it was, it was bland, it was not what they promised. But I actually enjoyed it. I thought it was a Deus Ex-like experience. It was pretty fun, at least on computer. But then they've obviously implemented Patch 2.0. They talk about all the improvements, but... Do I really want to rush back and replay it? I am doing that, but I also feel maybe I should have just waited. I could have saved my money. I could have come to the game three years later, which becomes a, a bit of a paradox because if no one bought it at release, they wouldn't have had the funds to fix it for people who waited. So it just feels sometimes like people who support a game do get punished. And that is something that developers, publishers have to consider. Eventually you're going to burn people and no one will buy anything on release. Everyone will wait for a sale if they know games are going to be super janky when they come out. You look at something like Jedi Survivor on PC. It's still got mixed reviews, I believe, on Steam. I've held off personally because I like the first, but I didn't love it enough to, to sort of rush out and support the new one if they're going to deliver a bad port. So hopefully Lords of the Fallen is reasonably smooth when it comes out and people support it if it deserves it. Coming back to the game itself, I again like the aesthetics, but I worry about a couple of things like these dual worlds. I can't for the life of me remember the names of the worlds, but I believe there's a living one and then some sort of undead one, which is a bit creepier. I hope that's a genuine mechanic feature that actually enhances the game. I would prefer that there isn't a situation where they've done that so they only have to create sort of half a landmass because they know you're essentially going to replay areas, do more of the same there with a different sort of feel and aesthetic going on. I just don't like when content is essentially reused to artificially extend the length of the game. It reminds me of Skyward Sword, Legend of Zelda, where they created a handful of great areas but they sent you back to those areas to essentially redo them with a small, pretty lifeless gimmick attached. And I don't want that for Lords of the Fallen. To be fair, from what I've seen, it's not confirmed that's the case. It actually looks like you can't stay in that undead world for a lengthy period of time. I've tried to balance watching videos with sort of finding out information, but also not wanting to spoil the game for myself. So I haven't sort of sat there and studied it all. I do want to enjoy it in a few days when it comes out, get that sort of release day excitement, get into it. However, from what I've seen, it seems okay. So I'm hopeful. I think that feature, the undead world, the living world, it should hopefully enhance the game, but I'll keep a little bit skeptical. We will see what happens. The bosses look pretty cool. The level design looks nice. They've done absolutely everything they can to make it feel like Souls. And that sort of brings me to another point. We've seen time and time again these different developers, not from software themselves, from what I've seen at least. So this is purely other devs 
who are making games similar to Dark Souls, and they'll call them Souls-like, they'll really try and push it as being its own genre. I don't know if that's really the case. It, it seems more like developers wanting to have an excuse for essentially copying from software, and, and I'm okay with it. It actually reminds me of the 90s, where there was Doom, similar games to that, Wolfenstein 3D, and then there were a ton of doom likes or Doom clones. And that was fine then. I still play them to this day. I find new similar games and I love them. I think there's no shame in taking something and putting your own spin on it. It's perfectly fine. It happens in all art mediums, whether it's sort of movies, TV, music especially. You don't have to reinvent the wheel if you do have a good idea and, and you have good execution. So it's totally fine, but I still don't know if I would consider Souls-like to be an actual genre. It's maybe a, a sub-genre of RPG, some sort of action RPG, but I don't think it really needs its own unique title. Maybe some people think it does, like Metroidvanias. But again, I think all of these games, that kind of style of just having good level design, bosses, and having great exploration too in terms of those areas you explore, you don't really have to put a label on that. I think that's just good game design. So Lords of the Fallen, I'm going to check it out, I'm going to play it, I do want to support it when it comes out, unless they absolutely pull the rug out and there's something wrong with it, it's horribly short, or they sort of front-loaded all of the good content and the rest is garbage. If it's not the case, I'll check it out, and it looks like there's going to be good games after this too. There's the demo of Robocop Rogue City, I think it is. I'm going to be checking that out, because I have a feeling from all I'm reading... That may be we're getting a lower budget, sloppier, sort of jankier Deus Ex, which is fine with me. If it can even be one sixth of, of Deus Ex, I'll be willing to check it out and, and giving it a bit of a run through. We'll see what happens. It seems there's still some good games to come in 2023. So thanks so much for listening. I'll see you on the next one. Cheers. Bye.